So this is Excel on the Mac and I want to show you how to get started using functions on it. This is Excel 2008 and it works exactly the same way on 2011. So I'm going to use 2011 but just wanted to show you something here in 2008 and that is if you can't see your formula bar at the top here you need to go into view and just on the edge here just you can just about see it. I've adjusted the screen so um, you can see more of what's going on but this formula bar needs to be ticked and you can see it up here and you'll notice that little FX there which opens the formula builder is exactly the same as the one in 2011 so let me just switch to 2011 and you can see here is my formula bar here and again if it's not visible just go into view and just make sure it's ticked over here or you can use this button here as well now the thing about functions is they work exactly the same in the Windows versions as well and in all versions of Excel. There are some new functions that occasionally come along but essentially most of them are exactly the same. So when you're looking at the tutorials for the Windows ones for Excel 2003 or 2010 the functionality is exactly the same. It's just the getting started and where to find them that is different. Now the thing about functions is they do a whole load of different things in Excel. There are loads and loads of them everything from being able to total up a column of figures or a row of figures to doing complex mathematics, working out loan repayments, interest rates, engineering statistical functions and even putting in a date that will automatically change when you open up your Excel. There's also functions for making decisions such as the if function, sum if, count if, and also the lookup for looking up information in tables. So let's get started and take a quick look at these functions. So over here, I want to put in today's date, and every time it opens up, I want it to display that date, the current date as I open it. Now, it's going to show me the date and the time. Just a quick tip in any version of Excel, if you just want to put in the dates that it is right now, and you don't want to change it, just Control and the semicolon will automatically put that in. So just press Enter, and it's in there for you. However, if I want it to change every time I open it, I'm just going to delete that. And what I'm going to do is go to my formula builder here. I'm just going to click on it. And I'm just going to move it across. Now one thing I'm going to do is this little area that it's displaying here, I'm just going to move that down because it will make everything a little bit easier to use. Okay, so now that I've moved it down, we'll be able to use this formula builder a little bit better. So what I'm looking for is a function called today. Now here is the formula builder. I've moved it across as you saw and here it is the function builder tab is selected with that FX on it. And you can see I can search for a function. There's categories here most recently used. And as I scroll down you'll see there's an arithmetic database and it shows me each of those functions within that. And you may have noticed that there was one called today up in the most recently used but this is the date and time section and there is one here called today. Now if you've been familiar with using the Windows version of this, this is a drop-down box, the categories, and then it lists all the functions as you choose that drop-down box. But nevertheless, all of the functions work exactly the same way in here. So when I choose today, any function I choose, it displays a little description about what it's going to do. I can click on this link to get more help, although you're not going to need that right now because I'm here to show you how to use it. And also there's this little reminder down here to double-click on a function in the list to actually start using it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to double click on today. You can see it's popped something in here. There's something in the formula bar as well. And down the bottom here it's saying arguments. There are no arguments. That's basically parameters to fill in for your function. And for today it's just reading it off the computer system. So it's going to not need me to actually input anything. So if I press enter, you'll see it puts in today's date click on it there it is in the formula bar as well and if I open that tomorrow it'll be a different date so I'm going to do the same again for now which displays the date and the time so I'm going to click on that and actually here it is now in my most recently used bit I could search further down in the date and time section and I could find it there as well and again I'm just going to double click on it it's given me a little description here and again I could get help so I'm just going to double click on now Again, down the bottom here, if I just move that up, there are no arguments to put in. I'm just going to press Enter, and you'll see it's popped that in there. So that's how you can get 
date functions and there's all sorts of date functions some that will strip out the date so you can get the day the month and the year which could be very useful and I do actually already have a tutorial that goes into date function so have a look at that it's actually done on the Windows version but that doesn't matter the functionality is exactly the same but I will be updating some of these to include those for the Mac as well right so just onto another sheet here if I go to this one which will show a little bit more about the functions that we've got and what you can do with them and actually using the arguments as well I've got some students with their scores a pass or fail that I want to fill in here I want to get the average the highest and the lowest so I've kept the formula builder open but I could close it at any time and then just click on my open formula builder here and I can then get that back so for average I might not know where it is on this list as you can see it's on the most recently used right here but I'm just going to type it into the search for a function type it in and it comes up and anything that closely matches will be there as well I'm going to double click on it and just move that up you don't have to move that simply because I want you to be able to see it on this screen here and you'll see that it's actually selected the range which is displayed down here it says number one but number one actually refers to the range a range can just be one cell it's highlighting from B2 to B8 which includes this blank cell here it doesn't matter if it includes the blank cell but I'm going to just select the correct range here and you can see it's filled it in now you can actually select more ranges you can select up to 255 different ranges and you can do that by adding another argument click on that there it is number two I could go and select another range I'm not going to and it doesn't matter that I'm going to leave that one blank Excel is very flexible like this so I'm just going to press enter and there is my average you'll have noticed that in the bottom corner here of the formula builder it was actually displaying the result here sometimes it won't depending on the function that you choose and that doesn't necessarily mean the function is not going to work but it does help to actually see what it is just there so to do the same again now for the highest one I'm just going to click on highest and this time I'm going to type in max because max is maximum and that's used for getting the highest value and you can see it comes up with a couple of different options there I double click it hasn't chosen the right range I'm just going to select it and again you'll see it has filled it in down here and again I could add in more ranges more arguments into that I don't want to I'm just going to press enter and there you go it's popped that in there the highest value is 78 a quick look that is correct so I'm going to do the same again to get the lowest value which you'll have guessed is minimum min so I'm just going to type in min I could have scrolled down my list to find it but sometimes this is quicker when you know what the function actually is and I would say that if you don't know what function you're actually looking for you can always google it you could put in how do I find the highest value in a range in Excel and it will tell you you'll find there's loads of websites out there so you're bound to find the answer like that I'm going to double click on min and I'm going to pop that in again looking down here you can see this top one has to be filled in that's why it's highlighted and I'm just going to choose the correct range I'm going to press enter again I could have added more arguments and it's done so there you go these are some of the basic concepts of actually using functions in Excel on a Mac and if you can do it on a Mac you can do it on a PC and vice versa but for this pass fail one I just want to show you something a little bit different which is getting Excel to actually make a decision for you now this I actually do have a tutorial on it's called the if function and what it does it will make a decision if something is below a certain value it will do one thing and if it's above a certain value it will do another so I'm going to do this if they get less than 50 they're going to fail and if they get more than 50 then they pass so I need to find the if function so I'm just going to type in if and it's right there double click on it I'm just going to move up my formula builder and there are a number of arguments down here to fill in so basically what I want to do is anyone who's got less than 50 is going to fail so I need to test that so over here is where I put in the value that I want to test which is going to be this cell here and I could type in B2 or I could click on it and from this drop down box I can choose the condition and I want it to be less than so you can see that I can have less than or equal to greater than greater than or equal to not equal to 
and equal to. So just remember, if I choose less than 50, it doesn't include 50. But if I chose less than or equal to, it includes the 50 as well. So let's just choose less than. I'm going to type in 50 here. If it is less than 50, then they are going to fail. So is it less than 50, then fail. Else, so if they don't, then they pass. As simple as that. And you'll see it puts in the quotes there for you. Now this could be another calculation, it could be a number, it can be some text, whatever you want to do. So something like a text calculation, for example, if you look um, below a certain amount, it would be one tax rate and you would have a calculation for that. And if it's above, you would do the calculation for that. As you can see, it tests the cell. Here's your condition. This is the value that it's got to satisfy. Then what to do if it's true? you fail and if it is over 50 so therefore over 50 and including 50 then it's a pass I'm just going to press enter on that and you'll see there it is I am now just going to copy that down by grabbing the right hand corner of the cell which is using autofill and you'll see everyone else has passed let's just change this person here let's make it 30 and you'll see instantly it has changed there. So that's the if there is actually a tutorial to see how to use that on the website, so go and check that out. So that is how to use functions in Excel on a Mac.